Hi friends, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I was told that I must use the God's name Jehovah. If I did not, then I was not speaking of the true God. But the whole Bible is about the true God. So if I speak of the Creator, or if I speak of the Savior, but do not call him Jehovah, does that mean that I'm speaking of a different God? Well, this does not make sense and it's not biblical. So in this video, I am going to show you 10 reasons why the God of Watchtower is not the God of the Bible. So let's go. Reason number one, Watchtower's Jehovah has a son who was Michael the Archangel. The God of the Bible does not. JW.org says there are other angelic creatures of high rank, such as seraphs and cherubs, yet the scriptures point to the resurrected Jesus Christ as the chief of all angels, Michael the Archangel. Yet the King James Bible says in Hebrews chapter one, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And Hebrews chapter two says, for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. Angels do accomplish specific tasks for the Lord, but they do not and they will not judge the world. God has not put the world under the subjection of angels. That's very clear from a reading of Hebrews chapters one and two. I see nowhere in the Bible that God has a son named Michael the Archangel. The scripture that they use as a reference is very, very weak. The second reason why Watchtower's Jehovah is not the God of the Bible is that Jehovah has a son who he created, who also helped with creation, and who was a spirit person in heaven before coming to earth. I wonder if this was before he was Michael the Archangel or after or what. Anyway, the God of the Bible does not, and I'm going to show you. JW.org says, unlike any other human, Jesus lived in heaven as a spirit person before he was born on earth, John 8, 23. He was God's first creation and he helped in the creation of all other things. So let's pick this apart. In the red there, he was God's first creation. On the right, John chapter one, verse two says, the same was in the beginning with God. How could he be God's first creation when he was in the beginning already with God? Now he was the firstborn of creation, but that means firstborn, first begotten of the dead. I've done a video on this. Also in the black on the left, JW.org says he helped in the creation. Whereas John chapter one, verse three says, all things were made by him. How many things? All things. He didn't help in creation. All things were made by him. And then John chapter 823, JW.org uses as a verse to support that he was a spirit person before he was born on earth. Well, John chapter 823 says, and he said unto them, you are from beneath and I am from above. You are of this world and I am not of this world. That's correct. That's because he was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning. He never was created. The third reason why Watchtower's Jehovah is not the God of the Bible is because Watchtower's God will take only 144,000 to heaven. The God of the Bible will take multitudes, and I'm going to show you. Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man was able to number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues stood before the throne before the lamb. So in heaven is a great multitude, which no man was able to number. However, the knowledge book on page 88 says, how many will God take to heaven to rule with Christ? Only 144,000. That is quite a contradiction, my friends. 
Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 says, After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. It's a little different than 144,000 in heaven, isn't it? But let's move on to the fourth reason why watchtowers, God, Jehovah, is not the God of the Bible. Because watchtowers, Jehovah, has a son named Jesus who came invisibly in 1914. The God of the Bible has a son named Jesus who will come and every eye shall see him. A major application from 1914 when Jesus began his invisible heavenly presence as king. King James Bible, Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. Matthew 24. For as lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man may be. I don't even know what to say about this. It speaks for itself. The fifth reason why the God of Watchtower is not the God of the Bible, because Jehovah of Watchtower has a Holy Spirit that is an impersonal active force. The God of the Bible does not. JW.org, just as wind is invisible but exerts force, so the immaterial, impersonal Holy Spirit is unseen but produces effects. This spirit is energy from God. The Bible says, the Holy Spirit has a mind, Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit has active knowledge, 1 Corinthians 1.10. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Would an active force be said to search all things? The Holy Spirit possesses, uh, possesses affection, Romans 15.30. Would an active force be said to love? The Holy Spirit has a will, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. He gives them to each one just as he determines. The Holy Spirit can be blasphemed, Matthew 12. The Holy Spirit can be insulted, Hebrews 10. The Holy Spirit can be resisted, Acts chapter 7. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Spirit clearly says, 1 Timothy 4, the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot, chariot, Acts chapter 8. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, Acts chapter 10. The Holy Spirit says, set apart, Acts chapter 13. The sixth reason the God of Watchtower requires their followers to go through the organization or the governing body in order to get to God, the God of the Bible does not. JW.org. Jehovah is guiding us today by means of his visible organization under Christ. I wonder where the scriptural reference is for that. Hmm, they don't have one. King James Bible, John chapter 14. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You see, friends, we thought we were in the truth when we were Jehovah's Witnesses, but Jesus Christ is the truth. Ephesians chapter 2, for through him, meaning Jesus, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Who needs the governing body when believers of Jesus Christ go straight to the Father? Our prayers are heard because we say them through Jesus Christ because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Who needs them? Who needs those guys? The seventh reason, the God of Watchtower says that only Jehovah's Witnesses have a scriptural hope of surviving Armageddon. The God of the Bible does not. JW.org, only Jehovah's Witnesses, those of the anointed remnant, the great crowd as united organization under the protection of the supreme organizer, have any scriptural hope of surviving the impending end of this doom system? I don't know about you, friends, but I don't know of anywhere in the Bible where the God of the Bible is referred to as the supreme organizer. Nowhere. Now, maybe in the New World Translation, because that, that's a demonic translation. I've proved that in other videos. 
But anyway, the King James Bible, Acts chapter 16, listen to this. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy, thy house. Romans chapter 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now I know Watchtower loves to say that he who endures to the end shall be saved, but that's it's taken out of context, friends. That's talking about something completely different. Believe on the name of Jesus Christ. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. You shall be saved. That's it. There's no enduring to the end. Jesus Christ paid the price for us on the cross. But let me ask you, where is the presence of Watchtower in the Bible? Where is the presence of the governing body? What, because they're the faithful and discreet slave? I've done a video on this. Scripture talks about a faithful servant being in charge of his household, keeping his household in order. It's not the faithful slave. It's a servant, a follower of Christ who is keeping his house in order. It's not about the governing body. That's a very, very weak application of scripture. I wonder, because the Bible says that every knee will bow before Jesus, when the governing body members bow before Christ, I wonder what he'll say to them when they say, that they were the faithful and discreet slave. I wonder if Jesus will say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, you workers of lawlessness that caused so much harm to so many people. But moving along to the eighth reason, the God of Watchtower says that Jesus was no more than a perfect person. The God of the Bible does not. Jesus, no more and no less than a perfect human. King James Bible, Hebrews chapter one. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now remember friends, I just have to stop here. First begotten doesn't mean firstborn of creation. First begotten, I've done a video on this. I've proven it to you from scripture. First begotten of the dead. He's the first fruit because he was raised bodily from the dead to never die again. And because of that, we shall live. Hebrews chapter one, verse eight. But unto the son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O oh God. I think he's a little more than just a person. The ninth reason, the God of Watchtower says that if you break specific rules, you'll be disfellowshipped. The God of the Bible does not. Despite our pain of heart, we must avoid normal contact with a disfellowshipped family member by telephone, text messages, letters, emails, or social media. Seriously? And that's showing love? King James Bible, Matthew chapter 11. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, Come to me, come as you are. I will give you rest. Does Watchtower give disfellowshipped ones rest? Do they give their own followers rest who, much, who must shun their family members, my family members who love me? It tears their heart apart. I, I know it does. Is that giving them rest? I don't think so. Romans chapter 3. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being just about, justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Listen, friends, the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
So our family members and friends who are shunning us, according to scripture, they're sinners, just like we are, just because we don't want to follow Watchtower. The Bible says, Look, nobody's better than anybody else. However, those who are in Jesus Christ in Romans chapter 3, verse 24, are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So my family members and my friends are shunning me when I've been justified freely by what Jesus Christ did for me when he died on the cross and was resurrected. Hard to believe. There's rest in Jesus, friends, not isolation and loneliness. And the 10th reason why the God of Watchtower is not the God of the Bible is the God of Watchtower has a son named Jesus who was not resurrected, but had his body disintegrated. The God of the Bible does not. JW.org. Jesus' body had disappeared and the bandages with which his body had been wrapped were left in the tomb, his body doubtless having been disintegrated without passing through the process of decaying. Where does that say that in scripture? There's nowhere that scripture says that, but I'll tell you what scripture does say, Mark chapter 16. And he said unto them, be not affrightened. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. First Thessalonians 4. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus Christ will God bring with him. Does that mean that our bodies will disintegrate? without passing through the process of decaying? No, Jesus was died, he was buried, and he was raised from the dead. As a result, according to 1 Thessalonians, because Jesus died and rose again, we also have that same hope. 1 Peter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Scripture clearly says that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. It does not say that his body doubtless disintegrated without decaying. <laughs> That's it, friends. We were never in the truth. We never had the truth. It was all about lies. Turn to the God of the Bible who has a son who died for you and who was buried and who rose bodily from the dead, thereby conquering death, thereby defeating Satan, the devil. The war has been won. There's no more war that needs to be fought. We don't have to sanctify Jehovah's name. It's all. It was all taken care of when Jesus Christ died for us. He was raised bodily from the dead so that we may live. Trust Jesus, friends. Salvation is available to you and it's found only in him. I hope you enjoyed this video today. There was really so much that I could say. Maybe I'll do a follow-up on this, but these were just a few things that um, I chose to cover today. Turn to Jesus, friends, and thank you so very much for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos, and I hope you have a great day.